All right, so thanks for being here tonight, guys. April 21st, Forever Strong Leaders Call. Really excited to see you guys tonight. Tonight's topic is going to be all about taking ownership for your business. So Natalie touched on a ton of the stuff that I wanted to say. So it was spot on, and she did a great job. But I wanted to start off by actually showing you um, this, this short, it's a 15-minute clip. I'm going to keep this call just to 30 minutes tonight. But I'm gonna start off with um, a video by Shaleen Johnson. Did you guys see in the Drop the Cookie page at all that 15 minute um, presentation that Shaleen did about taking ownership of your business? If anybody saw it, just kind of give me a thumb up. Oh good, no one saw it, perfect. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna start off guys, I'm gonna share my screen, I'm gonna start out listening to this, it's spot on, and then we're gonna kind of have just like a 10 minute discussion after it. So let me here share the screen here with you guys. So make sure that you're really paying attention to this, to this call. This call is really important for the leaders, like for us leaders on the team. Okay. All right, here we go. She's one of the most motivating people I've ever been around. But I've gotten to know her as a wife, as a mom, seeing how she acts with her family, seeing how she runs her business, seeing how impacting other people is so at her core and at her heart that she lives exactly what she teaches, which is so rare in, in like the society we live in today. So please, get on your feet. Help me welcome my trainer, my coach, my business coach and my buddy, Miss Shalene <laughs> So I want to talk to you today about uh, taking personal responsibility for your success. And the reason why I want you to know that it's so important for you to hear this message is because you're here. Because there's thousands, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of coaches who are not here. And they could have, but they decided not to be here. And you decided to do this. So you took personal responsibility and it meant um, getting somebody to take care of your kids and then justifying the expense and then figuring out how you're going to afford this. And, and then a lot of things, but you said, I'm going to take responsibility for my success. And I want you to know that you will be rewarded for that and, and immediately. Because when you take personal responsibility and you do something like that, you immediately feel more confident, right? And that kind of gives you a little bit of a habit. I did this. You own your own freaking business. You should go. Just leave. Because you own your own business. If you own your own business, there's nobody to check in with except you. Have you heard this word before? Google. <laughs> Saturday? No! For Pete's sake. 
doesn't have to be local. No, you can do a Google Hangout. There's a million things you can and should be doing. I want you to start brainstorming. Every time you have a great idea this weekend, I hope you have a notebook and you're filling it with wonderful ideas of things you're going to do differently when you go home. And you should educate yourself and go, oh, I can totally do that and make that each body. Right? And you should. Look, go on any the internet makes all this stuff possible. It's crazy. And everybody likes to share the success. So learn from it. Take it in, soak it in, make it your own. But it is your responsibility, 100% your responsibility. So I want you to ask yourself, what can I be doing better? What can I be doing better? How, how do I engage more? What, what can I learn? What do I need to know? Because it's about really education. But what can you personally be doing to become a better coach? It has nothing to do with your offline. Zero. Zero. It doesn't. I mean, it, it, all that they are there for really is hopefully by example. But there's plenty of offline coaches who are going to be in the top ten who don't have anyone above them. They don't need anybody above them. Success comes from you. You. It's your responsibility. And when you own that, guess what? You'll start to feel okay about your success. Because some people don't feel comfortable with their success, so it's easier to say, well, I never got a call. I never hear from so-and-so. I didn't even know that was happening. So, so now I don't have to be responsible for not being successful because it was somebody else's job to tell me about that. No. You either own this business or you don't. Okay, and Beachbody does a phenomenal job. We're really, really lucky that they do this incredible job of giving you templates and ideas. You know, they, we do all these things for you, but you can do your own thing too. And you should, in a way that feels right for you. Just you. You don't have to do it the way everybody else does it. Clearly. Each journey you've seen on the stage today and that you'll see this weekend, we all totally have a different approach to fitness, to health, to business, um, to our own lives. And it's, it's why it works. When you try to wear somebody else's clothes, you don't feel like yourself. It doesn't feel natural. So I'll meet people all the time and they'll go, I, tell, I love fitness. I love helping people. Yeah, I do all the programs. And I, I drink psychology, but it, coaching is not for me. <laughs> you hear that? So like, I'm, I'm not about sales at all. But you should come and take my class. You know, you're like, oh, but you, you are into sales. I mean, I'm selling my kids every time they walk off the door to keep good grades. I'm selling, you know, I'm selling the MGM grant to get better hangers because these huggable hangers, will hold, these wooden hangers are so big and expensive. Why do you guys get huggable hangers? <laughs> you know, when you're passionate about something that's like better, that's not sales. It's just like passionately wanting to help people because this is better. This is better. You should do this. So I think the reason why people try to use that excuse is because they, they're trying to look at doing it the way someone else is doing it. And you don't have to. You know, I'm not interested in being that fitness person. The, it, the, the stuff that doesn't appeal to me. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be normal. I, want, I, want, I, I don't want people to go, oh my god. I heard she had a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I might. <laughs> have a Diet Coke. I'm pretty sure I won't die. <laughs> and I'll have some water to wash it down later. But you know, and I mean, like, it's just, you, just, you just have to do things your way. Just your way. Your way. Your way is the right way. If it feels natural, it's the right way. Just figure out a way to do it. Even if it takes longer. Um, your second action is, I need you to wake up every day and just do one thing that makes you a better coach. So on, on your to-do list, can each of you pull out your phones? And, and put on today's calendar an event at 9 a.m. that repeats every day indefinitely. And it just says, what can I do today to be a better coach? And I need one action. It should only take 10 minutes. Like maybe it's to listen to the first 10 minutes of the last call that you missed. Or maybe it's to schedule an interview with so-and-so. Or maybe it's to educate yourself on um, the latest program, or maybe it's to study someone in another organization who's killing it, or maybe it's to figure out how to write better emails, or maybe whatever it is, it should only take 10 minutes. Can you give me 10 minutes every day? Can you give me 10 minutes every day? Hands up. Okay, if you can't, you should go because you should, no, for real, you should, because I want you to have fun in your life, and if, you know, it's not about 
having success and you can't give us 10 minutes, just go lay out by the pool. Wait, I'm left for like seven days. And then we're like, ah, I'm so far behind and I feel lame and it's all or nothing, right? Which is the equivalent of looking at a ginormously steep hill <laughs> and going, I either sprint up this or I don't do it. <laughs> and the people who try to sprint never make it to the top, right? And so they just quit, and then they sprint, and then they quit, and they sprint, and then they quit, and then they try to hide and disappear, and then they stop returning your emails. <laughs> right? Yeah, those are sprinters. Just do this up that hill, and you'll make it to the top. You don't have to go fast. You'll always make it to the top. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And please take care of the people in your organization who are taking baby steps. Look out for the sprinters. Does it get exciting? So you're like, oh, I got one. I got a sprint. And then you realize that they're like, oh, and you're like, they're like, test to perfect 15 star diamond in the making. I got this ringer. And then they sprint and then they're gone. Right? Take care of the people who do this. I would say, if you're taking baby steps, I'm walking next to you. When you're just standing there, I'll see you later. Because I'm not going to drag you. And that should be your rule of thumb. Know this. 20% of the people that you work with are responsible for 80% of your income and success. But we usually ignore those 20% because they're good. It's like the good kid in the family. You know, all the attention goes to the, the kid who's bad. They get mom and all the mom and dad's attention. And eventually that good kid, like, can't stand their family anymore. They're like, man, I'd be perfect. And I never got a pound of that. You have coaches, your top 20% of your coaches. Maybe you only have four coaches right now. Maybe, maybe you're just starting out, but give your attention to the ones who really get it and give them your recognition and give them your time so that those who aren't killing it see that they get you when they earn you. They expect you to carry them and to write their emails, and to call coach relations, and to let them know when the next call was, and then to update them personally because they don't have time to listen to it. Give your top people your best attention. Oops. Give them recognition. We work really, really hard when we know somebody cares, right? And it's those people who are killed it that we, we kind of ignore them to look, oh, they're good. They, they, they got it. They don't even need me. They do. They do. I do. I work as hard as I do because I will let them have a bath from time to time, not for the paycheck. At any level, it's not never about the paycheck. It's about the, I can't believe you did that. That was amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate you went above and beyond. That's what motivates people. Do you agree? Yeah. Will you make a note of a few people who you need to send a personal text message to? Or something you could send to them, a gift, recognition, Something that says, I, I, really, I really realized how grateful I am for what an amazing person you are, amazing part of this team. And I want to let you know, it means a lot. I've seen what you're doing. I've noticed what you've done. Make a notation and do that once a week. Can you imagine? You just want to do once a week. You know, today I'm just going to send messages to people who have earned it. Yeah, and it's okay. To, see, we teach people how to treat us. So those really demanding people, here's what, ha here's what happens. We think, well, maybe they're going to turn the corner. Then maybe they won't be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or needy. Because I, I, I can see something in them. And so I'll just keep letting them take my attention and steal my time and take me away from my family and text me on Sunday nights. And I'll just keep letting them do this. But you're, you're teaching them that that's okay. So set up boundaries with those people. The people who have 100% access to me 24 hours a day, they've earned it. And those who don't, then I set up boundaries and I say, um, I'm, I'm happy to respond to this on Monday during business hours. I, I don't have a problem sending a text message or that email, neither should you. Unless it's somebody who really has earned that all access pass to your time and your family. So when you leave here, I want you to think about a couple of things about Summit. Number one, honor yourself. Honor yourself for having gone above and beyond, for just being here. Number two, figure out who you can honor, who you need to honor, and set up a system with that. 
And number three is legitimately put that in your phone. That once a day is a reminder that goes off that says, what one thing can I do which takes 10 minutes that will make me a better coach. People have to take out huge loans and buy inventory and work 80 hours a week for a business to fail and then maybe four or five years later make $20,000. It's not that tough, but you do have to do the work and you have to understand if you are a business owner, start learn to become a better entrepreneur. And great entrepreneurs understand that just because they can figure something out doesn't mean they should be doing it. They delegate. You outsource. Just because you once figured out how to code a website doesn't mean you should spend the next eight hours coding yours. Okay? Just because you know how to do laundry doesn't mean you should. <laughs> Ooh, the ladies got riled up. Nice. Um, I have a tight schedule today. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate All right, we're going to stop it here. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so did you guys like that? Wasn't that awesome? I just love Shaleen so much. She's so good, and she, I just love listening to her. I listen to her live videos all the time. So you guys should check it out if you haven't yet already. Um, so I'm just looking over the chat here real quick to see if I missed anything. <laughs> Courtney's eating ice cream. You know, I love Shaleen too. She really does. She gets your head right if you're not feeling it, and she's just incredible. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so anyways, I just thought that this was a really important video for us all to listen to, especially as the leaders of the team. Um, just taking ownership of your business and really realizing that your team is looking to you as their leader. Really, really understanding that they're not looking to me, they're not looking to Liz, they're not looking to anybody else, like they are looking legit at you. So it's so important that you are, are, are doing the right things every single day to kind of pave the path for them. So things such as making sure that you're showing up, you know, for the calls, getting yourself to the events, you know, being engaging in the team page. If you have like certain tips or things, um, you know, that are working for you, sharing that in the team page. If you have any kind of inspiration, you know, sharing that in the team page to try to help inspire and motivate others. Certain things like when, um, when people, you know, are welcomed into the team page, you know, it's our job to get in there and, you know, like the post, say welcome to the team, make them feel, you know, like they're part of something, you know, incredible because it is, right? Same thing with rank advancements. When people rank advance on the team page, you know, it shouldn't just be the person who, you know, advances them in. It should be us, all the leaders chiming in together as a team because your team is going to see you doing that. Um, you know, and, and I know you guys, I know probably most of you have your own team page now and that's fine. So you're probably really active and engaged in that team page too. But, you know, it's still also good to participate in, you know, the bigger page, you know, in Team Forever Strong. I was a part of Liz's page actually until probably I was a full year in. Um, I was just shy of earning six figures. I had probably 40 active coaches below me. That's when I stopped pulling away. So just making sure that you're present so that your team can see really what this is all about. Um, recognizing your new coaches. I'm talking the smallest, littlest thing. Making a big deal about it and giving them shout outs in the team page is huge. Beachbody actually came up with a fourth vital behavior and it's recognition because it's so important that people get that. It just makes them feel better. You know how it makes you feel, right? When somebody recognizes you from doing something good, it makes you just feel special, makes you feel great. It gets your confidence up. It gives you that little extra boost, especially if you're kind of having like a rough day. And then you're right there as that person's support system to show that you believe in them and to give them that extra pat on the back. Little key things like that. You know, if you want to create the, the team that you are hoping to create, you know, a big team, if that's your goal, you know, a big successful team, then you got to be that leader way before you are that leader. You have to be doing those things that those other leaders that you are trying to work towards are doing. So a quick self-assessment, an honest self-assessment of what you're doing daily, you know, for example, looking at your wall, are you posting? And I know some of the stuff might seem basic, but it's not <laughs> looking at your wall. 
Are you posting two to three times a day? You know, are you really out there posting two to three times a day? It's gonna be probably near impossible to recruit quality coaches onto your team if you are not that consistent leader. If you are not that consistent leader, and, and I check a lot of times, I check a, to see what a lot of people are doing, and I'll see a post like once every five days, once every seven days. You gotta be consistent with it. You have to show up even when you don't feel like showing up, right? So getting in those couple posts every single day, and you know what, I know a lot of us are super busy, we have full-time jobs, you know, use Hootsuite, use PostCron. Um, there's a lot of coaches on the team that do that because it's just impossible for them to get to a computer every day. I always use Katie Benoit as, as an example because she's really good about that. She's super busy, her husband's off now um, with the military for three months. She's at home with two little kids, like ages three and under, um, and she's got to work full time, so she takes advantage of that, but she gets those posts up every single day. So get those posts up every single day. Um, making sure that you're hitting, you know, success club. Your coaches are literally going to follow in your footsteps, and so if they don't see you hitting success club, they're going to think it's not important. And also, you can't sit there behind the scenes telling them how important it is if you're not doing it yourself. It's kind of like what Natalie said. You'd be a huge hypocrite, right, <laughs> if you were sitting there telling your team to, Hit success club, hit success club, read your personal development um, if, if you weren't doing it yourself. So just using, taking like a, a real step back and really looking truthfully at, you know, what you're doing, the things that you're doing. Um, and you know what, guys? This business can be really hard. You know, it can be really hard. I, I will never sit here and candy coat this and tell anybody that this is a walk through the park, right? Because it's not. And if you ever hear that, people are lying. <laughs> It takes work and it's hard and sometimes you're discouraged and sometimes you don't feel like doing it and you still have to show up. You might not work as hard or as long or as much as you were before, but you still have to show up every single day to be that example to your team. It's so important. Um, and then honestly, just think about, you know, I, I, I think it's so important just to Think about like where you are right now in this business. You know, are you happy with where you are? You know, are you progressing? Are you making gains? Are you growing? If you are, then that's awesome. Keep doing the same things. What you're doing is working. But if you're stuck and you're in the same spot, and I mean, you haven't moved in months, income hasn't gone up, you haven't brought on any active coaches, you're not really hitting success club, everything's inconsistent. You gotta, look, you gotta look within and think to yourself, do you wanna be in a different place one year from now? Or do you want things to look exactly the same? You don't want a whole year to go by and then look back and say, I am in the exact same spot. So you guys are all the leaders and you guys are here right now because you know what it takes to have success. You know what it takes to be a great leader. So, you can continue to show what it takes to be a great leader and you can show that to your team. And if you do all those things and you're consistent every day and you never give up and you show up even when you don't feel like it, you are going to build an incredible team. And like Natalie said, you know, picture yourself two years from now. People move faster than others, others move, it doesn't matter. The difference is, is that you know you're here forever. <laughs> like I know I'm here forever, guys. You heard me talk on the team call if you were on it. You know, when Natalie spoke about how life gets in the way sometimes, you could easily make excuses for why you don't want to do this. But you're just making excuses for yourself. And there's going to be times where you feel defeated. Guys, when, it, when we rake advanced to 10-star diamond as a team, I mean, Im immediately I dropped down to seven, and I dropped back down to four. And then I got myself back to five, and it was only because two of the accounts were diamonds of my own that I built myself actually three of them. <laughs> so you don't think that's discouraging? God damn, it's discouraging. But you know, you don't focus on that. You don't focus on the discouraging times. You know, you think about it for a second, you let it go. You focus on people who are doing awesome things like you guys, right? Focus on the people like you who are here, who are excited, who are enthusiastic, who are, who are here for the long run. And you know, they are, you focus on the new coaches that you bring onto the team that are super excited and pumped up all the time. And that's where you divert your energy. And that's what keeps you going. And that's what gets you to show up every single day even when you feel like you don't. And that why, thinking of really why you're here every single day. 
So, you know, I just thought that this call was going to be really important. I, you know, I really loved Shalene's video just about taking ownership. I know a lot of times people can point the finger at other things that are going on in their life or other people. And you just, you have to look in the mirror and point it back at yourself because you are responsible for everything that happens in this business. It's all on you and you guys can all do this and you're doing incredible things and you're growing incredible teams and you just have to be willing to keep doing what you're doing, keep being consistent, keep showing up even when you don't feel like it and keep plugging along and you are gonna attract those people to you. You're gonna attract quality coaches who want it. That's the thing and it'll change over time for you guys. Like when I first became a coach, I pretty much took on any active coach who, who wanted it. I pretty much almost felt like, you know, I was like convincing them that they should do this. Now, I don't do that anymore because those people don't last. They don't work. And I want people on my team that are going to be serious about building a business. I want the go-getters. I want serious people. I want people who are going to be in this for the long run. So I don't even hunt down people anymore at all. If people come to me and they've watched my 45-minute webinar, that's a great sign that they're going to be serious because they took the time to actually watch the webinar. Or if you add people to your coach sneak peek, it's those people who are liking every single thing, that one rare person who's liking every single thing, who's commenting on every single thing. That's going to be, that's going to be your next runner on your team. So be that leader that you're hoping to be and continue to grow into that. And you're going to attract those people to you. And it's going to happen. And it happens slowly and it happens, but it will happen over time, guys. And you'll be like, holy crap, I got this enormous team. And eventually you guys will all break off out of Team Forever Strong, right? And you'll have your own teams. And that's what you guys will be known as. So, um, all right. So does anybody have any questions about anything that you heard tonight from like either even Natalie's call? Because she talked a lot of stuff that I wanted to say that I'm just not going to um, <laughs> repeat, obviously. So any questions about any of that, any questions about things that you're struggling with, maybe you need tips or recommendations on anything, you know, you can unmute yourself, you can ask, type it in the chat. And like Kelly said, we're all figuring things out together. Really? I mean, it's so true. Even now with myself being 21 months in, guys, I'm still learning new stuff every single day. Um, but what I really, really have found has been so helpful to me has been just, has really been diving more into personal development. That's really been what has helped me because if you want to grow a team and you want to grow a big team and you want to help people as best you can, you have to be willing to grow yourself and you have to make that a priority. So, I mean, I've been really honing in on that and that's been a real big help. Um, does anybody have anything? So I am le reading right now the five levels of leadership by John C. Maxwell. It's a great book. I'm listening to it on Audible. So anytime I drive anywhere, I'll listen to it. I don't like to like legit read a book. It just works out better for me if I use Audible, so that's what I do. But everybody should definitely be, you know, reading something that is going to help them. You're welcome. Anybody have anything else? Nope. <laughs> Quiet group tonight. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you guys because I know it's late and we have the two calls back to back. But hope you guys have a great night and a great weekend. And I will see you all next week. All right. Bye, guys.